I want to welcome everybody to this camp meeting. Let's open with a word of prayer. Holy God, we want to give you praise and thanks. You have brought us to a time such as this. We thank you for the great light that you have brought to your people. But even as we bask in this light, we recognize our ignorance. There are so many things we don't understand. The path is not as simple or straight as we had once imagined. In our confusion, in our waywardness, in our inability to see the future, even in our latency and condition, we bow before you today, asking for your forgiveness. There are many things that we should have done, which we have left undone. The time is short. And we need to redeem the time. I want to pray for your leaders across the world. Those in positions of responsibility. At this moment, at this hour of crisis. May they not waver. May they not leave their post of duty. But may each of them count it a blessing. A privilege. Um, privilege to be a leader in this movement. I pray for the flock of God that they would honor and glorify your name in thought and in action. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, I wanted to welcome everybody to this camp meeting. I have two presentations. presentation, I'm not sure how much material we will get through. And this I hope that the thoughts that I present are not too disjointed. And that each of us can receive a blessing. I hope you would like my background. background, <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. It took me a long time to produce it. 
That's all I can say. So, as you know, this is a, a cat meeting that's been hosted by the French ministry. So it would be remiss of me if I didn't speak a little bit about France. And the issues that the French members and the French and France in general faces. As you all know, in a few short days, it's going to be the final elections in France. And what seems almost normal, almost commonplace today, only a few years ago would have been unthinkable. You all know the two contenders, the two people who are fighting for the right to govern France. You know the incumbent and you know Marie Le Pen. So I hope that, let me rephrase that, if you're not aware of the latest developments, can also look as well my my developments are uh, I said the latest it's a couple of days old. Uh, uh, I don't want to give sensational headlines. And did you put my headlines? I know Mutsa Mashao San. I will. So Miss Le Pen said the following. Saka. Uh, if she wins the election, she's going to take France out of NATO. The unimaginable is now reality. Now, of course, she didn't express it in that way. Uh, she didn't literally say she's going to take France out of Europe. Sorry, take France out of NATO. Or out of Europe as well. What she said is the following with respect to NATO. Now, I don't know if you realize, I, I think you do by now. And this is that NATO, whilst it doesn't have its own army, has its own centralized command uh, center. But NATO can I see so there's a general that runs NATO. And this general coordinates all the countries that are part of NATO and makes sure they have an integrated system. And what? Miss Le Pen wants to do Should I quit when Le Pen manage? is basically say that NATO cannot control French soldiers. That integrated military command that NATO has will have no authority over the French military. Now, I want you all to realize that that is a significant change 
of events. significant. Especially considering what's going on in Europe at this moment in time. So in the midst of the Ukrainian war, the second leading nation in Europe is essentially saying if the elections go a certain way, that France will essentially withdraw its allegiance to the to NATO's cause. Could France each visa um allegiance yeah? She said a lot. I think it was last Wednesday on the 13th. Wednesday, uh, so I've already said that she wants to leave NATO's integrated military command structure. And your guess is as good as mine, what she means by the following statement. She wants a strategic reapproachment with Russia. To me, that sounds like she wants to go back and be friends with Russia. Now, we we all understand we're living in the history of Daniel 11 verses 40 to 45. We understand what prophecy teaches. We understand the grand battle between the two kings. The north and the south. North, Newark, South. We know how this war has progressed over the centuries. <coughs> we know that following the fall of the Soviet Union, and its subsequent death, the United States declared a new world order. America, Vakatora, new world order. It stated that it was going to be a unipolar world order. Vashiti, world order, Yakanga Iri, Yemando, unipolar. It wasn't going to be a bipolar world order or a unilateral world order. Yes, I saw it. Bipolar, kind of unilateral world order. Now we can argue about the rights and wrongs of whatever deal or arrangements the United States made with Russia at that time. Despite the United States position in prophecy, position in America now the prophecy. The position that Le Pen is taking. Position here in Otorwana La Pen is one that is antagonistic towards the United States. The ear in a Kakurwisan, never United States. Now, how the United States, the King of the North, fulfills prophecy, could even United States Vano fulfill a prophecy say, is yet to be 
properly understood. But part of its strategy, despite being the global superpower, is one of multilateralism. Le Pen dismisses multilateralism. La Pen multilateralism. She blasts Germany. And criticize the European Union. Oh, Europe. Said that climate issues were a low priority. And as many conservatives do, she attacked the globalists. <coughs> and whilst doing all of that, she was almost silent about Russia's brutality and what it was doing. If you listen or read what she said, you'll know that it's very reminiscent of President Trump's time in office. Now, even though she said France would respect Article 5 of NATO, Kunyange, Iakati, uh, France Icha respect Article 5. As I said before, Yenab. she was clear that French troops would not be under NATO control. Such an ambo tower, Akanga, Akajik, Sakuti, Mauto, E France, as we pass Pinat. She sees NATO. NATO. As a puppet of the United States. And what States. she wants to do is she wants to place France equidistant from Russia and from the United States. And she thinks this is going to bring security and safety to the French people. So I don't know what you think about her position. But she thinks she's clever. Because she thinks if she has this independence, if France has this independence, people will be left guessing about what France will do from one day to another. She doesn't want to leave Europe in the same way that the United Kingdom left. But the reality is it doesn't look much different. And in one of her closing remarks, she said the following. France and Germany have, have completely different strategic goals. Their strategic goals were irreconcilable from each other. My strategic goals are irreconcilable. I don't know how many of you realize the significance of what this person is saying and doing. And this is what we're going to do. No, this is a good significant issue. We're going to do a lot of work. How close she is to winning. 
And if she wins, the ramifications for all of us across the world. Now, I don't know who's going to win the election. But this is just another example of how complicated real life is compared to prophecy. If you want to learn more about her position, Go back to 1966. Charles de Gaulle is the head of France. Charles de Gaulle, France. And he took France out of NATO's uh, central integrated command structure. You may not know, but it was only in 2009 that France came back into that integrated structure. It's only a relatively recent phenomena. Why is France such a problem child of Europe? I don't mean to say that in an insulting fashion. I mean it in a prophetic fashion. It's a rhetorical question. Part of the reason is, is France's role in prophecy, which occurs at multiple levels. We could go to Revelation 11. So kuna kutokira kuna Revelation 11. And we could go to Daniel 11. Ti kuenda wa shakare kuna Daniel 11. I hope we all are okay that we all understand. Do you know about the Tese Tinoans we see sir? The two versions of Daniel 11 that we need to hold at the same time. Ma version ma vidi at Daniel 11 at no fana kubata pangwa i mwechete. I will call it our version. Ndichati version yedu. And Smith's version. Ne version ya Smith. I will call it the spiritual version. Ndichati version ya iri spiritual. And in the words of Smith. Mumaz we are Smith. A literal prophecy. Uh, prophecy, it is literal. And I borrow that phrase from his book. Where he speaks about the whole chapter, Daniel 11, being a literal prophecy. However you look at this issue. Uh, France's role in prophecy continues to have an impact upon the world stage. In previous studies, I've spoken much about the French Revolution. I'm sure we're all familiar with that history to some degree. 
Ndo imba watu teseti ne kunjusa kwa tina ako norondo yoyo. It's not my purpose to give dates and events in any particular order. And this could occupy my dates and my events in order in particular. I've already spoken about the penal code that was um, created in that history. I've already spoken about the declaration, I'll call it the Declaration of Human Rights. Declaration of Human Rights. I just want to speak a little bit to those subjects. Now, in the previous study, when I spoke about the penal code, I spoke about the subject of sodomy. Which is just another term for homosexuality. And in that study, I praised the penal code. Because I wanted to make a certain point in that study. But of course, as you all know, history and prophecy is more complex. And the reality is, in that penal code, there wasn't so much an explicit statement that sodomy was okay, was legal. It was more a statement of a mission rather than commission. Yaiva statement kanakutaura kwe mission pashnamboche kukukuzi So what that means is what the penal code didn't say rather than what it did say. So so whatever and this you put it is also sinakutaura ne penal code pashnamboche shayaka taura. The reality is the following. Reality The penal code didn't mention sodomy. And therefore, technically, it was not against the law. However, there were many people who were persecuted because they found other laws to um, criminalize their activities. There are some good and bad things that come from that revolutionary history. Revolutionary history. Just so that we have a correct framework or a simple framework in which to talk. What we will call the First Republic. So you have all these kings ruling France. Then you have a revolution. revolution. And they get rid of the king. Of the monarchy. And they replace it with a republic, the first republic. So I hope I have my dates correct. Forgive me if they're wrong. So the first republic begins, I think, 
The public yoku tanga, ino tanga 1792, yopera 1804. Which I think is 12 years. Ano kuna itama kure 12. And after that, Mushure maishu. It ends up becoming a monarchy again. Ino pezra ya monarchy shakari. They don't call it that. But that's basically when Napoleon basically becomes the emperor or the king. And so France sort of goes back and forth um, Saka, over the preceding decades. Saka kwe makore, makumia, anu petano. France minge chingweta back and forth. As it slips in and out of being a republic. And if I'm correct, I think we're currently in the Fifth Republic. I hope I'm correct in all of that. So, coming back to the history of the Revolution and the First Republic, and also a little bit about Napoleon. Now, as I said, there were some good things and some not so good things that came out of the revolution. I think what's useful if you took the time, and I think it would be a useful use of your time. Is if you looked at the events that led to the revolution. One of them was the connection between France and the United States. And one of the things that was the catalyst for the revolution was in fact France's generosity or its animosity, depending on which perspective you have. It's animosity towards the United Kingdom. And it's generosity towards the United States. France interjected into the English American War. And he essentially tipped France over and made it bankrupt financially. It tipped it over financially. And that was, that was coupled to climate events that were occurring at that time. You cannot separate France from the United States in that history or this history. That That's why the words of Le Pen are so important for us to understand today. So one of the things that Napoleon is famous for saying Napoleon. I believe he says it in 1817. I believe he's in captivity or in imprisonment, house arrest at this time. So, I would love to say this in France, but my accent's no good, so I'm just going to do the English version. I'm going to give the literal English translation. 
Without distinction of birth or fortune. So what that means is that Napoleon was very proud, not only of himself, because he's speaking about himself, <coughs> but also because of the France that he had created. He said, posterity will do me justice, will look at me kindly. Not because of all the mistakes that he had done. Not because of his place in prophetic history. Not because he was the king of the south. Not because of our understanding of prophecy. But because of this ideal that he had, that he experienced, if I can put it this way, Napoleon re reinvents himself in the 21st century Twenty-first century, in the hearts and minds of this movement, movement What I mean is the following: We have a perspective of who Napoleon was. This tool. Of Satan or God, depending on your perspective. Actually, depending on what story you're telling. Who is used to bring down the King of the North. And to mold and shape. History to the end of the world. Not only in the old world, but in the new too. So we all understand his role. As it pertains to a military leader. Or I could say the Revelation 11 perspective. Spiritually, Sodom and Egypt. Spiritually, uh, Sodom and Egypt. And all that sounds evil. evil. But today, for a moment, as his as he said. Of himself. I want to do him some justice. He believed the following. Without distinction of birth or fortune. A person can become something. A career is open to all talents. A career yaka fsaruka kunema talent talent. Without distinction of birth. He was speaking about himself. But he was also speaking about the fruit of the French Revolution. As I so tauro, ne bam soro pe. My fruits, a French Revolution. The First Republic. Republic Yekutanga. The Declaration 
I will say, of human rights. He said, from nothing, I raised myself to be the most powerful monarch in the world. He had no name and he had no fortune. Today we would call him a self-made person. Europe was at his feet. Europe, yeah, to find up and this could Africa. only have happened in the crucible of the French Revolution. French Revolution. In the death, the destruction, and the rebirth of France. Without those events, he could never have been or never have become the man he did. So you can understand his motto. A career open to all talents. Without distinction of birth. Now that philosophy, that idea, philosophy is not unique to Napoleon. It's not unique to France. It's unique to France. To France's declaration of human rights. Can I put declaration in my human rights? I get one in France. Because it sounds very similar to the Declaration of Independence of the United States. Nekutia can of Fanana Chaiso, ne Declaration of Independence of the United States. Which said, Yaitaura Iwichit, all men are created equal. Van Veselaka Gadziwa. Now, I don't know how much time you have taken to consider those words. Because we separate to the point about it referring to men. Which is not the point I'm making now. But all humans are not equal. Napoleon testifies to that fact. Napoleon <clears throat> He says, a career open according to one's talents. In that short statement, if you unpackage it, there are great truths. And it's, I'm going to call it the eternal tension. Uh, eter eternal and tension when two things are, are fighting one another in opposition, the eternal tension between two viewpoints, between two issues, equality and freedom. All of that is packaged in his short statement. A career open to all talents. It addresses the subject of equality. All humans are equal. 
But not all humans are the same. Now, the Americans were not obtuse. They understood what Napoleon was saying. Of course, they said it decades before he was even born. If you go through the Declaration of Independence and continue reading past that statement, they expound upon this idea. The tension between everybody being the same, equal, and people having different talents. And people having different talents. Which I'm identifying as freedom. So we have discussed so far Marie Le Pen's position for France. We have discussed how she wants to take us back to the 1960s. I don't know if we're willing to call it the Dark Ages. Because that was also a history or a decade of enlightenment. I've then spoken about a positive aspect of France. Spoken about Napoleon. Napoleon. Following the First Republic. Where he speaks about the creation of a nation. Where anybody, where everybody without distinction of birth or money, but purely based upon their own ability, their own talent, could become anything. And I want us to realize that this idea is closely aligned to the American ideal. I've already said that it's I, I, that it, I would recommend that you go back and, and study why the French Revolution began. The steps that bring us to that history. I want to talk about another historical point. So I want to take us to 1789. August 26th. 26. So 
I've spoken about the Declaration of Human Rights. But as is, but as all French people know, that's not an accurate um, translation. In English, it's called the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. As the Americans are going to do in this history, the French make the same mistakes. They produce this document which attempts to correct the ills and the woes of France. As the attempts to deal with human civil rights. And what I want us to understand is that as in the United States, the people who are making these decisions, who are creating these documents, are not in a vacuum. They're not in a room locked away from society. They are not the only voices that are crying out aloud. If you read with a critical eye, the history of these two nations in that period, the period of the revolutions and current history, if you think of Biden and Trump, and you think of Le Pen and Macron, you see their personalities, you see where they want to take their countries. You see how similar things are. Now, in the history of these revolutions, there were voices who held true to the Enlightenment. Now we've spoken about the Enlightenment in previous studies. The Enlightenment was a period of history before the revolutions. Enlightenment history. Which, as the word says, enlightenment, it was a history where philosophers, thinking people, began to analyze human nature, society. We can call them philosophers. Most people call them. But we could also call them sociologists. People who studied society. And what happens on both continents? In English, they call it the movers and the shakers, the people in charge. Even though they claim they want to lift up 
human civil rights. That they want to have equality. That they want to do away with a monarchy. With a despot. Uh, what ends up happening is that they replace one despot with another. Now, we all have to admit that France makes bigger mistakes than America. But even in those mistakes, two countries had different roles. And even in what was done wrong, God was able to make use of. So what am I saying about the declaration of the rights of man and of the citizen? I'm saying the following. That this document, this statement, document that was meant to be a beacon of human civil rights. fell far short of its purpose, its goal. And the people who produced this document were not blind to that. On both continents. When we're speaking about France. There were voices who pointed out the duplicity and hypocrisy of this document. Even though we can attack it, and we need to, I don't want us to lose sight of the many good things that this document, this declaration gave to humanity. So, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the declaration. It's seventeen articles or statements. My article seventeen can also my statement seventeen. When you read them. If you read them in a vacuum, if you read them, if you read them without context, they would all sound really good. But as an example, Article One. It says, and let's not let's not get hung up on the word men. Men are born and remain free and equal in rights. So men are born free. And they must remain free. And have equal rights. Okay, Who that. wouldn't say amen to that? Who would not sign, put their signature to that statement? The problem is, it's not just the word men. It's who those men are. This was only a very narrow sliver of 
the French populace, the French people. This a very narrow portion of the French people. It excluded all women, of course. I guess we would expect that. It excluded all slaves. By the way, it took Napoleon two times to get rid of slavery. This republic couldn't do it properly. Then Napoleon said slavery is okay, and then he finally got rid of it. Napoleon That's a very simple telling of slavery uh, in that history with respect to France. So, not only women. Not only slaves. But we'll call it the uneducated. Those people without uh, land. Without any kind of status in society. None of those people are these men. The definition of men that is being used here is very narrow. Definition men Now, why am I making this point? It's because it becomes a significant issue in our generation, in our history. There's this issue that's addressing the rights of men. Number six. Number six. It says every citizen has a right. You know, to my citizens, oh, San Fanonga, I need right. But the reality was that not every not every man had a right. Let alone not any women. So this becomes a significant point of contention in this history. No, Vayeta point it is significant Munorondo uh, E. We run out of time. What I would like you to do between today and tomorrow is get a copy of this declaration in your own language and go through the 17 articles. I will post it on uh, the Zoom forum and then coordinators can distribute it if they like. But I think it would be useful for us to look at those 17 articles. And see which of them you agree with, which you disagree with. Which you think are relevant today or irrelevant today? Also, if you have the opportunity, look at the history that precedes, that comes before the revolution. Before French Revolution. The Enlightenment. The Enlightenment. The American Revolution. Yeah, American Revolution. Climate change issues. Mm, now the climate change. 
how they all come together with an inept king in France. With France inept, inept means um, an inexperienced king who ignites the ignites the flame that is the French Revolution. There are good things and there are bad things. Let's close with prayer. Holy God, as we consider the history in which we are living, may we remember that we are both observers, the third angel, we are actors, we are participants of history. The second angel. We are going through an experience. Something that we don't fully yet understand. As we see the twists and turns of the fulfillment of prophecy. We can either be plants of righteousness or we can be stubble, fit for fire. As we both observe and experience the events that are touching all of humanity My events are, are on every continent of this planet. May each of us be thankful for the privilege, privilege. for the safety, safety of being in your church. An organization that has been cut out of humanity. Organization that is shielded and protected. Both from the mountain and the statue. Though we have this great privilege. You have told us. That many are called, but few are chosen. In this history, in this dispensation, dispensation help each of us that are physically in this movement, movement who have an intellectual assent to the truth. To the veracity of the midnight cry. Also have an experience. experience. So that we may remain in this movement. And not fall into the wicked world below which on one side is the mountain and on the other the statue either ditch means death to the individual help us to remain on the path and to understand how history is repeating. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.